You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world at next to no cost through credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com where you can contact me, read episode transcripts, complete a free credit card questionnaire to receive tailored recommendations, follow me on social media, view helpful resources, and listen to past episodes. Thanks for joining me for episode 24, Credit Limits Aren't Very Important. I'll talk about why the yearning for credit cards with high limits is overrated and comes with great cost. One unfortunate trend I see in some online credit card spaces, especially from people new to miles and points, surrounds an intense want for large lines of credit. Instead of prioritizing total returns a credit card will provide, including big sign-up bonuses, good benefits, and earning potential, some focus on credit limits. Signing up for cards with high limits and low overall value comes with tremendous opportunity cost. Lots of value is left on the table, and the credit lines likely won't make much of a difference when thinking about credit scores and approval chances for future cards. Credit limits have never been a consideration in my process of determining which credit card to apply for. If an issuer gives me around $10,000 or more, that's great, but some cards I've applied for have given me far less, 6000 5000 and even 1000 the lowest limit on my Barclays JetBlue business card likely because Barclays Bank isn't lenient with credit lines for new applicants. I knew I might get a very low credit line, but that was okay, because I only needed to spend $1,000 to get the welcome offer of a massive 60,000 JetBlue miles, along with other perks, including in-flight discounts and free checked bags. Since I have many other cards and won't be spending much on the JetBlue card anyway, the $1,000 limit won't limit me much. Had I said no because of a small credit limit, perhaps favoring a card with a high limit and low returns, I would have lost tremendous value. Consider the Navy Federal Credit Union Cash Rewards Credit Card. Many yearn for this, noting high credit limits of $15,000 and more for some who are approved. First, just because some get a high limit doesn't mean that you will. This depends on income you report and other factors, even including randomness from banks. In many cases, people with similar financial profiles experience different results so the credit lines aren't a guarantee. Worse yet, some will not even be approved even though Navy Federal Credit Union is generally lenient. The Cash Rewards card comes with a very small sign-up bonus of $150 for spending $3,000 in 90 days and only 1.5% cash back on all spending. Many, many, many cards give far more than $150 as a sign-up bonus, and 1.5% cash back on all spend isn't anything special either. Those who have solid credit profiles can be approved for premium cards, offering far more than $500 in value just from sign-up bonus. Even semi-frequent travelers can get points, miles, and benefits, and much more compared to cashback offers. Further opportunity cost comes considering various bank rules. Some issuers like U.S. Bank, Bank of America, Barclays Bank, and Chase won't be eager to approve when one has several recent inquiries and open accounts. Those just starting with credit, either rebuilding or having a thin credit profile, can start with cards like the Discover It Secured and the U.S. Bank Harley-Davidson Visa, and gain far more than what Navy Federal Credit Union offers, especially when they will later be in a good position to get other U.S. Bank cards, since they established a relationship. If one faces declines for the Discover and U.S. Bank cards, there is likely a significant issue with one credit profile, including outstanding balances, collections, and accounts which need to be removed. Maybe two, more time is needed, or one should look into being an authorized user on a very trusted credit card owned by a significant other, family member, or a good friend. When I started with credit, before I knew much of what I know today, I got the Capital One Quicksilver card, City Double Cash, Amazon Prime Store card, and Bank of America AAA card. I faced little to no issues years later getting the cards I have now. I didn't need Navy Federal Credit Union. I didn't need cards with $20,000 credit limits. I was fine. Sadly, I applied for cards I would never apply for today. I didn't know better, but now I can make more informed applications for the future. What might be some motivations for people who want large credit lines? Perhaps they see a large credit line as a sort of personal achievement, something to flex, something to feel cool about. Why does this matter? Why is this more important than better benefits, more points, and more cash back? Personally, I find it awesome to get great returns from banks, take great vacations, and save money. Indeed, my priorities aren't the same as others in all cases, but it really pays to question your priorities and change them when they are hollow. I encourage people to do much better, and I'm grateful for those who have educated me. 
Perhaps people think high limits are needed to get premium cards? This isn't true as I mentioned, but there could be some truth for people carrying balances month to month and spending a large amount on their cards, because credit utilization doesn't suffer as much. For instance, having a $5,000 balance on a card with a $20,000 limit would be a 25% utilization, versus a card with a $10,000 limit leading to 50% utilization. High utilization will interfere with credit card approvals, but there are ways to play the game smarter. If for some reason you need to carry a balance and you're not paying interest, I don't advocate for paying interest, especially when and if you're overspending, this can be done better on business credit cards which don't appear on your personal credit report, including cards from Chase, American Express, and Barclays. If you're facing difficulties getting approved for business cards and will have a large balance, you can consider paying in full before your balance is reported to credit bureaus and or placing charges on your card shortly after a low or no balance is reported. Transferring balances can also be an option, but this comes with opportunity cost because many cards with a balance transfer offer don't provide great benefits, and this also adds more inquiries and open accounts on your credit report. Perhaps people just starting with credit or rebuilding want high limits because they believe it'll be a faster process to win the credit card lottery, as past podcast guest Cakeology would say, rather than having a more patient, prudent strategy. Again, I don't find a compelling case that high limits and many cards will lead to later approvals for more premium cards. This will, though, lead to being locked out of getting many valuable chase cards, and then will require even more waiting at some point because of running into too many recent inquiries. Just take your time when starting, so you can later be in a great position to get high-valued cards. In podcast episode 14, I spoke about the importance of increased offers. It would be a shame to be getting several low-value generating cards with high credit limits missing increased offers because of so many recent inquiries. At some point, well, we won't be waiting forever, but we'll be getting those cards with great offers. Spacing out inquiries will be valuable. Right now, for instance, I can extend my available credit limits with a City Costco Visa business card, but the card offers very little, no sign-up bonus and marginal returns from categories I have better covered on other cards. It's simply not worth an inquiry, it's better to wait. Even outside of Chase cards, US Bank will be releasing a new Altitude Connect card in weeks to come. See podcast episode 17 for analysis. I'm also interested in current increased offers with UBS. Even if these two banks weren't offering great deals, I'd prefer to wait for better cards to come along rather than settling for low offers. Early in the game, it's easier to find high-value cards, so waiting won't be as prudent, especially after chase cards, but later on, high-value cards can be harder to find. It's important to have a good strategy, to think ahead, to research, rather than gunslinging applications getting shoddy cards. Another question for those who want high credit limits, are you going to use the high credit limits? Will you be spending more than, say, $10,000 each month? If so, it's better to spend across multiple cards rather than just one, so you can get multiple sign-up bonuses, and even target high spend goals in some cases, like the American Express Hilton Business Card, which gives a free night certificate after spending $15,000 in one year. Low spenders don't have much to gain from high limits, and in many cases, one can spend a large amount on American Express charge cards, which don't have fixed limits. Especially now in April of 2020, so many listening will have significantly decreased their spending, so these limits aren't being used. Just like interest charges, cash advance fees, and many other things associated with credit cards, I pay very little attention to credit limits. Instead of focusing on credit limits, I focus on value cards will provide, coming from sign-up bonuses, benefits, and bonus categories. High spend limits especially aren't needed for many with solid credit profiles. Those just starting or rebuilding credit can get by just fine without prioritizing cards with possible high limits, which won't give many benefits. This credit card space can be complex, and it's quite easy to make mistakes applying for bad cards, running into declines which could be avoided, missing good offers, not knowing many tips and tricks, and not knowing how to evaluate offers. I'm here as always to help. You can complete my free credit card questionnaire form at hurdygurdytravel.com, and for a more focused approach, also supporting my efforts, you can subscribe on my Patreon page. A $30 a month subscription grants a once a month hourly call, a one-time custom podcast episode, and advanced notifications of podcast guests who will answer your questions. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more content. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com where you can contact me, read episode transcripts, complete a free credit card questionnaire to receive tailored recommendations, follow me on social media, view helpful resources, and listen to past episodes. Support my work through Patreon, PayPal, the Cash App, and referral links by visiting the Donate tab on my website. 
Subscribe on YouTube at Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. Like my Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast Facebook page. Follow HG Travel Podcast on Twitter and follow Justin Vakula on Instagram. Schedule a free 15-minute consultation with full-time business coach and YouTuber Cakeology, who can help you formally establish your business, build business credit, and get premium business credit cards. When you select from various paid services after the free consultation, I will receive credit for referring you. Listen to Cakeology on episode 12 of my podcast. Visit my other podcast at stoicsolutionspodcast.com, where you can find practical wisdom for everyday life, inspired by the ancient philosophers of Greece and Rome. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who help support my work. Have a great day.